At the heart of On One Photo Raw 2020 is an incredibly fast image browser. So we can find and manage our photos really easily, all inside of our browse module. In Photo Raw, we don't have to import anything into the program to start modifying, adjusting, or organizing. We can browse through and find photos where they live, whether it's on an external hard drive or an SD card. But if we do want to import, we have that option as well. So let's say we just got back from a shoot and we insert an SD card and we want to import these photos. So now inside of our local drives, we have this memory card here. And we could browse through these photos if we wanted to just by clicking on it. But let's import these images. So to import photos, we'll just head up to our top bar and in File, we can click Import. So now we're inside of our Import dialog. And we can go in and we can choose our source that we want to import from. I like to choose Eject when done, especially if I'm using an SD card. And now we have all of the usual options for importing. We can go through here and choose different images that we don't want to import. We can check all, check none. And then on the right side over here, we can choose different options for the importing. This first one is our destination. So we can choose where we're importing these images into. I like to go in and choose different locations by this Choose menu. And I'll just choose this external hard drive here. And I can actually add a new folder so that it automatically puts a new folder on this external hard drive. And I'll just name it Dylan's Picks. And this More option here, I can actually choose a backup folder so that if something happens to the original photos, I have a backup folder. Below that, we can rename. So if we want to rename our photos something, I can click this on, and I can add or remove criteria with the plus and minus sign here. So if I want to add in a number, I can go into this menu, and I can add a serial number so that now it's that file name, but I can start with one. Below that, we have add metadata. So if I turn this on, I can add in keywords, I can add myself as an author, and I can also add in my own keyword and metadata presets. Below that, we have photo settings. So if I turn this on, I can actually add in preset styles onto the shots that I import. And don't worry, if you apply any presets instead of import, you can always go back and you can readjust or take the preset look off. Everything is non-destructive and readjustable inside Photo Raw. And then we have Edit Capture Date. So you can edit the information for when these photos were shot. So we can head down and click Import. So now it's importing the photos into that folder. And the great thing about Photo Raw is you can actually go around and modify images, transfer between different folders, all while your photos import. And you can view the importing progress down here at the bottom with this bar. Now we're inside the folder where we imported the photos into. And one way we can speed up our process of organizing these images is to create catalog folders. We can view our catalog folders up here in the top left under our folders pane. What catalog folders do is they create a small media cache with your image preview files. That way you can see previews of those files instantly, even if they're really large raw files. And they also keep track of any changes made in that folder when they're cataloged. I would recommend cataloging with folders of photos that you look at quite often. So maybe your favorites folder or something like that, where you intend on going back into it quite a bit. Well, I'm gonna head over into my local drives. I'm just gonna right click this Dylan's pick folder where we imported the images, and I'm gonna add to catalog folders. We can also click it and drag it up to the catalog folder section to add it in. Or you can click the plus sign here to add in any folder that you want. So now my add catalog folder dialog pops up. And this reads, cataloging a folder enables searching, viewing subfolder contents, and auto tracking of changes in the folder. It will also cache previews for viewing photos instantly. It can take time, but it is done in the background. So now we can actually change the size of our previews, and I tend to leave it at standard sized. But if you're using a smaller laptop or an older computer, you can choose minimal or medium. So now that we've imported these images in, let's go into that folder and let's clean it up a little bit. And let's do some culling and rating. My favorite way to rate photos is to use my film strip view mode. So I'm just gonna start with my first photo here and I'm just gonna hit F on my keyboard. 
So now I'm in film strip view mode. And before I start rating these shots, I'm gonna head up and I'm gonna click on photo and I'm gonna make sure I have auto advanced turned on. The reason I want auto advanced turned on is because whenever I rate a photo now, let's say I'm gonna rate this photo a one star. If I hit one on my keyboard to rate it a one star shot, it's automatically going to advance me to the next shot. This saves me time whenever I'm calling, so I don't have to click through a bunch of shots and rate them individually. If we want to rate these photos, we can just use the keys on our keyboard to do that. Or we can go down here and we can click on these stars, we can click on these colors, or we can like or dislike. We can also do that by hovering over the photograph. So if I wanted to rate this photo a five star photo, I could hit five on my keyboard. And now let's say I wanna rate this photo a red color to know that it's out of focus. Well, to find out what keys our colors are, we can click this box and it looks like six is the key for red. So I'll just hit six on my keyboard and now I've marked that image red knowing it's out of focus. So now I'm just gonna go through some of these photos and I'll rate them either a one or a five star. So now that I've rated some of these photos, we can go back into our grid view mode by hitting G on our keyboard. And to see all of the five star rated photos, I can use my sorting menu down here at the bottom. So I'll go into this menu, I'll click rating, but I'm gonna make sure I go back in and I click descending. So now if I scroll all the way to the top here, I have all of my five star photos up here. And then if I scroll down, Here's all of my one star photos. So I'm just gonna select all of my five star photos. And if you wanna create subfolders in Photo Raw, it's really easy. Just right click and click add subfolder. And I'll just name this one selects. And I can check move items into subfolder so that when I click add, now all of my selects are right in this folder here. Another way to stay organized inside Photo Raw is to simply drag and drop folders. So with the select subfolder, let's say I wanna move it into this external hard drive and I know I have a favorites folder in here. So I'll just click and drag this subfolder over to this external hard drive and then I can just drop it in. And now if I roll open this favorites, I have that selects folder right there. I'm just gonna head up and I'll roll this back up here. And now let's talk about creating albums. So our albums live down here, right below our cloud storage area. And albums are a great way to access your photos whenever you close Photo Raw and open it back up. So if I wanna create a photo album here, I can click on this plus icon, I can create an album, and we'll just name this Photos for Video. So now if I head down to my albums, I can see it's created an album here that says photos for video. So if I wanna bring photos into this album, I can just click on them and I'll just drag them over and I can drop them in here. So now let's say I'm navigating around Photo Raw and we'll go back into our pictures folder. And now we're not viewing those photos. So if we wanna go back and view those images, we can just head back down to photos for video and we have all of those photos right there. So it makes it easy to access those photos if you've gone into a different place in Photo Raw or if you've closed the application. Now let's head over and I'll just hide this albums pane and we'll talk about our dates pane here. Using the dates pane, we can find photos based off of their year, month, and day. So let's say I'm looking for a photo that was shot on my friend's birthday, August 25th. I'll just open up these dates and we'll go to last year, 2018, We'll go into August and we'll grab Saturday, August 25th. And there's that photo I shot of my buddy Nick on his birthday right there. So now let's move on and let's talk about our filters pane. So our filters pane lives below our dates pane here. 
and we have to click to enable it. And this allows us to search for and find different photos based off of criteria. So for example, if I want to find all of my liked photos that I've hearted, I can just click this and it will show me all of my liked images. And there's also a bunch of preset styles in here that you can use to search for different shots. If you've modified any of this criteria in here, you can actually save that as a new style to go back and find other photos whenever you've exited the program. You can also go down and modify your date range to pick a specific date. And in my advanced options, I can actually choose to match all criteria or any criteria and add in all of these different modifiers onto the search. And I can add in as many as I want. So now let's move over to the right onto our keyword list here. And your keyword list is going to show all of the different keywords that you've ever used for any of the photos inside Photo Raw. So there may be a ton of keywords here, but you can organize your keywords really easily. So if I want to remove a keyword, I can just right click and I can delete the keyword. I can edit the keyword if I want to rename it or change the title, or if that keyword is already assigned to a photo, I can remove that keyword from the selected photo. But let's say I want to assign this keyword to that shot. I can just click assign keyword to selected photos. And now it's assigned this two to this photo right here. And I can see in this keyword list, this number right here is telling me all of the photos in this view mode that have that keyword on it. I'm just going to right click and I'm going to delete this keyword because I don't need a two in my keyword list. So now if we want to organize our keyword list a little more, maybe create nested keywords, we can do that really easily. So taking a look at my keyword list, I see I have 0 to 2 years old and I have 20 to 25 years old. So these could probably be in the same category. So I'm just going to right click, I'll add a keyword, and I'm just going to name it age. And I'm going to make sure that I don't nest it inside of 2010 Q4, and I don't want to add it to selected. So now if I click apply, I go down and I now have that age keyword right there. So I'll just click these two and I'll drag it down and I'll just drop them inside of age. And now I've nested those keywords inside of age. 